social media in a very you know, traditional form. Um, one uh, afternoon, probably about 18 months ago, I saw my daughter on a laptop giggling away and I thought, what's, a, what's going on here? And actually there was a, a pop star that she liked and she was watching a live video of this pop star uh, and she was asking for a shout out from this, this pop star. Uh, and what it was, it was the, the early days of Twitter camp. So uh, let's just come in. We're just talking about the, uh, just a bit of context around uh, what myself and Simon have been doing. So this Twitter cam is basically um, the pop star sat in front of their laptop uh, and using the, the built-in web camera and people tweeting in, um, you know, requests, give me a shout out. So my daughter, you know, you know said to this pop star, you know, give me a shout out. So it's like, hi Charlotte. She was like, ooh, all excited. So it kind of gave me a bit of an idea and thought, hang on a minute. That, so she's engaging with a pop star and I've got a job to try and engage with the public. How can, how can I actually try and do this? So we started off using um, we started using Twitcam, which was the very first platform, probably about 18 months ago, which literally was my own private laptop, um, actually um, in Studio One, which was my dining room at home. Because for those <laughs> of you that are in the in the police service, the, the IT is, is very the, the bandwidth, the speed at which it comes in is very very slow. So we started off in, in Studio One, and we started literally advertising what we were about. So we've got questions for the police in Coventry fire service and that's how it kind of started. So Twitcam was replaced by Twitvid and then Bamboozer uh, came along. Bamboozer was introduced to me probably about six or seven months ago. Um, and, and all that Bamboozer is, um, it's, it's a free app, it's B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R, bamboozer.com. And in effect you are a, you are a citizen journalist. Um, so there's, there's my, my smartphone and I've got the Bamboozer app. And in the, in the top, you can actually put the title of what you're actually about to stream live. So at the moment, we're being streamed with the iPad on, on Bambooza. But a lot of people in Syria have been using this in terms of like live broadcasts. Um, so in, in, in effect, anybody is a citizen journalist. So myself and Simon have been using Bambooza. And all that you need is you just need a good 3G um, signal, which most parts of the country have. So I think our first exploit was on a bonfire night, um, the 4th, 4th of November I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. When we went out together in Coventry, so busy night for the fire service, busy night for the police service, and what we were doing is we were in effect streaming live video from around Coventry and actually showing the members of the public what the fire service are doing to tackle antisocial behaviour and the police service were doing. Um, and it really is very good quality, um, and I'll just see if I can show you. And what it does, as well as watching it, what it does, it links to Twitter and Facebook. So it sends a link. So it, um, actually, if you want to watch the actual video footage, you can click on that link. Or if you're not watching live, it actually then streams to your own live channel. So very much, very similar to YouTube. Um, and then, it, as I say, it, on the dashboard on Twitter, uh, on Bamboos of the website itself, it actually shows you uh, how many views there have been and uh, whether they're live or whether they're historic. Uh, and this one is, bear in mind, this is, the quality here is on a 3G phone from uh, an estate in Coventry. I think we went out to, a, I think we actually explained it, David Simon. Yeah, I think this was just a, a game, just a, the theme was antisocial behaviour, so this was kind of about a rubbish fire on Bonfire in particular. We went out to the scene to film from there. Just keep the public updated around how much impact it has on the emergency services. I'd like to hear now that Hermes Crescent in Henley Ward. We've had quite a past six of our first reports of the bonfire on the evening. It's now to seven. Five percent of the fire itself. Just see the kind of. That's just 3G. You can see the quality on that. It's really, really good. It's another prime example of our resources. Um, and what we've done, um, we've done similar things that we've done like uh, mobile police and fire surgeries. So we've gone to a, like a neighbourhood, like a set of shops, and you've brought a fire appliance down, I've brought a mobile police station down, and we've done live virtual meet reality really. So we've asked like a street briefing, so members of the public come along, and they can also interact online as well uh, to ask us questions. Um, what, we've, um, what we've tended to find is that um, we've, we've done a quite a, a broad spectrum of, of videos 
whether it be uh, meetings that people might find interesting uh, on the League for Disability Hate Crime in the West Midlands. So I've been tweeting, I've been bamboozling some of the videos there. We've done uh, initiatives around what we call Serve and Protect as an operation to try and improve trust and confidence um, in, the, in the public, just trying to show them how we're dealing with people. Um, I've interviewed victims of crime live uh, and tweeted it. Um, I suppose really what I wanted to do is that I actually think it's an opportunity to expose both the police and the fire service in, in a much more positive way about the work that we actually do. Um, what we don't seem to find is we don't seem to have many people who are like taking it up other than myself and Simon. And I would like to see um, police community support officers, local neighbourhood officers using their own smartphones to actually say, well, I'm actually I'm on, the tr on patrol uh, now, uh, I'm in this location, it's a reporting, it's an antisocial behaviour hotspot, and actually, do you know what, there's nothing happening. Um, so it actually is like a video clip, it brings, you know, it brings the, the community priority and the attention of, uh, of the local resident, but in a different format. Yeah. So, no, I think very much, um, as Kerry said, for us, it's about giving that positive message. Uh, it's not just about emergency response, particularly for the fire and rescue service perspective, obviously. Um, a lot of uh, the community out there just look upon us as, as uh, seen as being an emergency response, but we're doing much more than that, a hell of a lot more. So this is an opportunity for us to really sell and inform uh, you know, the community what other work that we're doing out there. Um, as well, I would say, as, as anti-social uh, behaviour themes that we're working with. And how close other partners. So we're looking at public sector, um, you know, uh, services. Uh, we're not working in isolation. We do actually work together quite closely, particularly police and fire, um, with regards to arson, arson and social behaviour. So um, very much along those, trying to give those positive messages. Um, it doesn't replace any other, uh, you know, any other form of engagement that we've been doing. It just, you know, supports that. So, you know, we've we, we discussed um, the potential for, um, I think, in October, um, or September, October, we've got the party political broadcast um, conference in, in Birmingham. You know, the, the silver commander for the police wants me to use bamboos so that they can do live broadcasts from, from there to update the public about what's happening in, in Birmingham. There's all kinds of opportunities I've used it at football matches, used it at public order events. Um, but I, I just feel there's a real opportunity to, to help improve and develop trust and confidence in the communities that we serve. So it's really, it's not for, this isn't really a talking shop for me and Simon, this is about to say, this is what we're using. Can you give us any thoughts as to how we can improve it? Have you got any questions? That, that's, that's really what it's about. Have you had any problems as a result of your use of it? Um, no, we haven't actually, to, to be fair. And, and it's a real fine line because sure. I, I, could, I could go out on a, on a morning drugs raid, you know what I mean? Um, but there's only so much that I can do. I mean, the traditional media have the opportunity to be able to pixelate out photographs and bleep out bits and bobs uh, expletives but I, I can't do that so it's a real fine line about, about what I do but certainly from the, the football perspective people have really enjoyed seeing what goes on at, at a football match um, and the like so so no we haven't had any problems um, if anything it's been, it's been more on the positive side. Yeah. Great. Um, my name is Mandy, I'm from Cumbria Police, and uh, we just kind of slightly used it, so when we do our online web chat, yeah. we get the inspector to right. you know, actually be there to introduce yeah. the meeting so people can actually see who they're speaking to and they get a bit more personal, but yeah. we've kind of been a bit scared to do anything else with it, but I know some of the inspectors are itching to go yeah. and do something, yeah. so the few things that want for me with people's faces and the crowds, you know, how do you... Monitor, so you're doing these um, Q&A surgeries, yeah. do you let people know that you're going to be filming it before they yeah, come yeah, on? Yeah, we do. Yeah, for those sort of surgeries, particularly when we've done outside, we call them Studio 2, outside broadcasts, um, you know, <laughs> they've been well aware that they're in front of a, of a camera and they're going to be live on live stream yeah. on, uh, through the internet. And if they're not comfortable doing them, obviously they don't come ahead. Um, uh, but they can ask questions and we can answer those questions on, on on camera yeah. effectively. And we've invited like local councillors have turned up as well. So I've interviewed the local councillor about what are the issues in the area. So the local councillor comes along, they get the face, they get a little bit of, you know. Uh, so it, it's been, certainly been positive. And who do you get to actually film it? Is it, is it one of your team? Is it a member of the um, Literally, um, I, I, yeah, I literally just use my, my iPhone. Uh, I bought a little um, adapter from uh, eBay for £2 and I put it on the standard 
tripod, press record, and, and away you go. The prime example we've got there, you don't need any, anybody to operate the camera, you just want your sister to press record. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> dummy there, the camera <laughs> there. Uh, you know, it's, it's left running effectively. But I'm glad you said that because, you know, um, something like Cover It Live, well, okay, it's great to see a little news feed, isn't it? But actually seeing the face yeah. of the Chief Constable or, you know, um, yeah, exactly. So I know that the Commissioner is doing his like, Cover It Live, but actually wouldn't it be really great to have that live broadcast? You know, and actually, we, the police, you know, often the media look to us for actual releases. Well, our releases are traditional, aren't they? They're normally typewritten and then they're sent out. Actually, why can't we do bamboozle, you know, releases? There's the stream, there's the, there's, you know, there's the feed, as it were. So I just think there's whole lots of opportunities, but we, we, over 18 months, we just don't seem to have got much take up. I, I know it's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, how do you promote it? Do you kind of just do it there and then on Twitter, or do you do like some build up towards a bit of, it? A bit of a build up, seven days before traditional press release, a few tweets, follow us, you know, there'll yeah. be this meeting, much as you would do with like a normal community meeting, a street meeting. Yeah, so the, the bonfire campaign did not radio as well, didn't we? Yeah. So I love the radio picked up on it and we kind of promoted it prior to the actual yeah. uh, you know, weekend of the bonfire. I mean, think about, you, you know, your seasonal campaigns, you know, your darker nights, your lighter nights, your antisocial behaviour, you're going to get all those all those kind of things that you can do and just in a different format and it's right it doesn't replace it it supplements it i'm still out in the community meeting people talking to them face to face but actually just giving them an opportunity over on the camera you mentioned some people were reluctant to use it though do you, do you know why well that, that i can understand that it's not for everybody because actually you're putting yourself in front of a camera okay and you've got to talk Okay, so we're talking now. If you weren't asking questions, and it's me and Simon, and we've been there before, haven't we? You need material to fill in, otherwise it gets really boring. <laughs> and you try talking for 20 minutes, you know, uh, and so you do need that interaction from the public. So the, que the public can ask questions as well, either via Twitter or through the Bamboozer platform, which really helps. Yeah. Uh, and we get viewers from all over. We have, we've had viewers, I mean, ideally it would be nice for the local residents, but we've had them from Dubai, we've had them from Scotland, we've had them from all over the world, as you would expect with Twitter. Yeah. Can you say something about your experience of using Bamboozer during the riots? Uh, did I use Bamboozer during the riots? Um, I probably used more traditional, like, TwitPic, so where there was uh, rumours in Coventry that Lady Godiva's head had been chopped off. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a photograph, there's Lady Godiva, she's absolutely fine. And, and why, why did you not use Bamboozer then? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not particularly sure of the actual date that I became aware of Bamboozer. Oh, okay. But so that, that would have been ideal. Oh, know, okay. So it, it wasn't that it was there and we, were, we weren't using it. Yeah. If it had been there in August, I'd have actually I'd have set up with a tripod and, and undone it. Okay, so Bamboozer is quite very recent. It when you talk about 18 months, Bamboozer yeah. is really the last but it is, yeah, because okay. we've said, right, where, where, where's TwitCam gone? TwitCam's kind of, you know, that's old hat now, mm. you know, and you could actually say, well, you know, Bamboozer is that live citizen journalist, who knows what else is going to come on? Sorry, question about that. Um, so, um, following on from this lady's question, hypothetically, if you did bring it along to a, a live operation, yeah. um, somebody else earlier asked who would be filming it, yeah. well, you're not going to bring your tripod with you on the live op, so, yeah. A, who's holding the can, yeah. B, if you uncover anything operationally sensitive, yeah. does it cross a line where it then becomes evidence? Do you have to take it down from the site? Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and obviously, because it is live, it is live now, yeah. it automatically posts to the Bamboozer website, but I actually own that piece of video, as it were, and I can go in and I can press delete, right. and I can remove that, but actually then, somebody may have actually recorded it, yeah. and it could be... Yeah. So it's a real fine line. Yeah, it's a real fine line. Do you stream from one corporate account then? Um, that's, that's a really good point actually. I've been, I've streamed from my own private account yeah. in Coventry and I've also streamed from the main West Midlands police account. So when Aston Villa played Manchester United, I know that Manchester United are home to Aston Villa today, but when we were back in Birmingham, um, I streamed from the main West Midlands police account. So you get a lot more interaction, a lot more you know, the more followers, the more interactions that you get. How would you encourage people, to, like inspectors or whatever, want to do this? Would you say create your own account? Yeah, or would you say way. use West Midland corporate no, accounts? No, I think what you've got to do is you've got to use your own kind of accounts, your okay. own Twitter accounts to link to it, to, to Facebook. That, Dave, would you come in on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's got to be within the structure, because I, I think the success of social media comes with the structure. You can't just go off on one, because that's how we've developed it, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but I think you 
You've also got to balance the issues against YouTube because you've got a bigger audience on YouTube as well, and how you can link the two together. Uh, the, the Bamboozle gives you live, YouTube doesn't, but I think our record is we did a raid and within 15 minutes of the raid we got the YouTube clip out because of the technology you can, you can do that quickly and, yeah. and that was more operationally comfortable for us to use. We don't as force use Bamboozle yet, we're looking at it with a lot of interest, but we heavily use the YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, YouTube is it. No, I was just going to say, YouTube is now coming out with technology that allows you to pixelate out images, um, faces as well. Yeah. So if you had oh, right. something that yeah. retrospectively yeah. was yeah. something you wanted but, um, to pixelate you, out. You could use your Google Plus, which has got yeah. the ability to live stream through Google Plus, yeah. which then also then links to YouTube as well. Yeah. So um, I, I think, I mean, the technology, uh, for me, the aim is about improving trust and confidence. The public like the fire service, they like the police, mm -hmm. they like what we do, they want to see more of it. Um, there are just so many opportunities. Because so you've got to be led by the community if they're yeah. interacting with us. Well. Yeah, Th this, this isn't about me, this isn't about me and more followers, it's about something I genuinely believe in, and actually I think people actually like and certainly from the feedback that we've got, but I just want to just take it that, that next step forward. Yeah, I just want to pick up on the newer question about sort of um, operational incidents and who, yeah. you know, who holds the camera. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when it comes to operational incidents, our role changes. You know, we're there for command and control, as, you yeah. know, as officers we're there for command and control to manage our incident. Yeah. So this becomes only if it's convenient or only yes. if you've got the opportunity yeah. to do it. Um, I think where we mainly used it, to be honest with you, is for that community engagement, trust and confidence. So very much about education, um, not undertaking what we call our, our frontline main response yeah. criteria. Uh, we have used it yeah. for um, a major incident <coughs> in Coventry. Um, but this was post, and neither of us were part of the command and control, but we went along um, as an addition to the command and control, uh, control structure of that incident. It was a fairly large fire at the time. And, and we used the opportunity of our contacts and using Bamboozle to give an update to our followers um, and to anyone who's interested on where the incident was, uh, you know, the state it was in, and what, uh, you know, what problems it was causing us, etc. But we were no part of the command and control structure. So we've used it from that perspective as well. So I'll, I'll actually be integrating Bamboo so it to cover it live this week with a bit of luck. As I'm sure. Because we'll be doing it, we've already planned a web chat with our force executive, and we use Cover It Live for that, which makes fabulously well for that sort of work. But what I'll be looking at is how we can integrate some Bamboo so clips into it, so we'll do a live and integrate. One thing we learned from, we did um, Save an Ice Live just before Christmas, and we used we taking pictures and video out on the ground. We used an iFi card, as daft as it sounds, uploading to Flickr, so the guy in the office op operating the, the feed was able to take the images within seconds, post them onto the live feeds that we were doing mm -hmm. on public live, so we could do that quick check if we got faces blurred out, are we okay with that picture? Because to be fair, sometimes when you take a picture, you don't behind in the background. So we, we did that as an, a way around the quality assurance. It's an Wi-Fi card, it's a, a memory card that actually transmits the pictures via Wi-Fi in the camera. So we've got a little portable hook like the one in the window there in the back pocket of the guy out on the ground taking pictures. And as soon as we took the picture, it appeared on our private Flickr account. So we just cut and paste them wherever we wanted to on, on Twitter. Because the guy on the ground can't do that because he's too busy with frozen fingers standing in the visitor <laughs> centre yeah. at 2 in the morning. And that worked well. So there's all, I think the idea is that there's so many channels, you can yeah. use them as you best can. This is, this is just one, as I say, one facet of it. So, has anybody any, any ideas about how, you know, we could use it differently, better, you know, how we could get more operational officers, you know, involved? Except in the, you know, we're not going to be handing out iPhones or smartphones to all, from all of our staff, but a lot of our staff are using their own phones anyway to tweet um, from, from their neighbourhoods. Any yeah. ideas? Or? I think one of the things, I'd, I'd sound a word of warning yeah. um, about using 3G with it all the time. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously you're using a corporate account and somebody else is yeah. paying for the data. Because so football, sorry. Streaming video can yeah. be very data in intensive if you're paying yeah. for your own data. Yeah. That's well, what you need to be aware of. To be fair, yeah. I've, I've never used more than 500 megabytes. You know, that's my monthly allowance, but yeah, that, that's a good point. But it is only short, sharp, you know, hello, I'm on patrol in Smith Street, this is where I am. Do you know what? There's no issues. Resident, thank you very much. Please are listening to me and, you know, the situation's improved. Yeah, what, um, what we've been able to do with doing sort of outside broadcasts and staying in one location is we've been able to look at public Wi-Fi 
facilities and lobbying to those. We even used, um, you know, been fortunate enough to use uh, local businesses, their Wi-Fi, so we could jump outside the shop and they've got Wi-Fi, got their permission, and they said, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been able to do that as well. Um, and again, that's, again, working alongside the community. You know, they, they're happy to see us outside there. Um, you know, so it's good with a bit of a reassurance yeah. as well. Um, so, you know, there's that partnership effect going on as well. And the mobile patrol's been really useful as well, just putting the tripod in the back of the police van, which is patrolling an area, so you're not actually going to an incident, but you're filming a particular area, people say, oh yeah, I know where that is, yeah, we've turned up at this location, and I think it works fine on the 3G. Are you able to edit your content once you've got No, no. So this is being streamed now, so everything that I've said is, is, is there on the, on the World Wide Web. But are you able to um, um, take the video back off the bamboo? Or uh, uh, yes. yeah. Oh, there you go. I was just about to <laughs> So you can do that, can you? Can yeah, you? I mean, uh, we talked about basically YouTube. I mean, there are some live streaming services that do integrate with YouTube, but Bamboo's it doesn't. But and I do it all the time. And you, once you've once you've archived it, I mean, it archives after you've finished. And you can then download that file and edit it and do what you want with it. So you can edit it and upload it to YouTube if you want to save yeah. that content. Yeah. And I, I, that's what I tend to do with mo a lot of my live streams is I'll take it down, I'll edit it, and I'll put it on YouTube, because as you say, you get a bigger audience on YouTube. Yeah. Right, that's interesting. Just one thing on your audience and yeah. measuring it. Have you, have you started to measure how many people are viewing? Or yeah, you, 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 can, you can on... Um, yeah. on have, you have you planted this question? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, just to give you a bit of... <laughs> a bit of competitive edge between Kerry and I, and uh, I did a few videos uh, on Bamboozo, we say, right, who's going to get the most views? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for a little while, I'm not knowing longer, but for a little while, I was yeah. reading the top of the tree, so to yeah. speak. But so, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 one that I, the one that I showed you there, I mean, all joking apart, so I've had 171 views of that, and the three of them were live. Um, so it, it's good, you know, I was Folsal, Folsal Road Patrol, you know, <coughs> around the town in Coventry, 13 people watching that live. Uh, you know, isn't that great that members of the public tune and watch that live with a total of, you know, 96 views. So th there's all kinds of, you know, opportunities, but it's just trying to develop it and just take it that one step further. Yeah, I mean, it's grown, it's grown. You know, and, um, initially when we first started doing it with the Twitch cam, uh, yeah. viewings, uh, live viewings were, were relatively low, really, for the effort that we were putting in, because it was, it was new. Uh, and now, as as we've gradually um, you know used it more and more, um, you know, more and more people have started to log on either only for a short period or for the whole session, uh, those sort of things. And uh, I guess we've evolved and been learning ourselves yeah. as we go along, haven't we? Yeah. I mean, it just gives it gives the, the public access to senior police officers as well, which is in terms of like cover it line. Could you guess the backdrop of the information management ramifications of downloading files, keeping data? interviewing victims, etc. Have you thought through what the ramifications of the Data Protection Act might be? Um, and how are you managing this, you know, proportionality, how long are you keeping it, yeah. how are you disposing of it? Yeah. You know, and against also the European Commission new view on data protection, which is saying things like the right to be forgotten, the yeah, rights yeah. of privacy. Yeah. Do, do you think that you know, it'd be really interesting. How are we going to manage it? Because it's a great tool, isn't it? Yeah. But how are we going to manage that bit of the environment, do you think? I think my, my view is that the, the message is I'm not saying you will appear on Bamboozer. Mm. It, it's actually, we're going to be on Bamboozer. Does anybody mind? You know, and we kind of, I take that view in terms of proportionality. Yeah. But in terms of the content, you can see the content's there. If somebody came to me and said, you've caught my face in there, I don't want it to be on there, then I would remove it if it's as simple as that. Mm. If new legislation comes in and where we have to review it on a periodic basis, then so be it, we would have to review everything that's there. It's there, it's corporate, it's dated, it's timed. You know, that, that's my... Do you keep it in a depository, as it were? It is it like a, a main depository it's of the It's kept by the, 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 the Bamboozer website. Mm. The password. Of the password of the carries or my profile. But you, anyone can go in, search on my name, find those historic videos. But it, the, the thing is that as a police officer, I've probably got different constraints to a member of the public. So if I was a member of the public on the street now, I could be doing that, and actually I'd be broadcasting live on. Um, oh yeah, you oh, know, I, yeah, I accept yeah. that. Yeah. It's just that we are under quite a lot of pressure at the moment about how we hold things and yeah. how long we hold it and who we share yeah. them with. And because I think it's a great tool, and I think actually, you know, that you asked those questions earlier on, in a dynamic situation where you could use it as, I'm going to use the word propaganda, you won't like that word, right, but, okay. 
but you, you know, you'll know that during right reporting. Sorry? <laughs> factual reporting. Okay, <laughs> factual reporting. Yeah. During a riot situation, yeah. there'll be lots of tweets going around. Let's yeah. go to this location, and we're going to do X. Yeah. If you can get to that location, and if you can broadcast and say yeah. we're actually here at the moment, and yeah. can we just tell you there's nothing going on, I think that's very powerful. Yeah. You know, in order to sustain community confidence, yes. and so that's why I think it's a great. It's a great tool. I think. You, I mean, as an example, Kerry, you did that, didn't you? Because in the riots, uh, you know, along the Twitter, the Twitter stream, uh, they were saying there were, you know, riots in, in a particular area of Coventry. Um, Kerry was able to go down there to that location, uh, you know, and tweet that actually, no, there's nothing here. Yeah, at all. and that's really. I think that's very powerful. Yeah. Um, do you think there's more that um, senior officers should be doing with regards to making other officers more comfortable in doing this? Do you think that's one of the issues that people are a bit fearful of doing it because they're going to get you know, told off in a sense or they've done mm. something wrong or you know, filmed the wrong thing? Yeah, I think there is. We'll pick up on what you said yeah. there about you know, data protection and, and managing that data is a, you know, a fair factor. Um, I think, I know that uh, from our own organisation's perspective, uh, and Debbie, you'll know this, is, is the fact that our chief is quite willing to allow us to, to explore these opportunities and recognise that, you know, we may well make mistakes in the future. Uh, but at the moment, you know, we haven't, thankfully, made any mistakes. Uh, but when we will do, um, you know, we'll cover them under ordinary corporate policies. Um, and I think it's just about having confidence to use it. Though. Yeah, and, and I think it's, you know, our officers day in, day out across the country go out and they have conversations with the public, don't they? All you're actually doing is it's, it's the same kind of conversation, but it's being recorded, mm. you know, and you wouldn't say anything now if we weren't being recorded. If you were, you know, it's that. And, and there's been lots of, lots of debates about, you know, well, should we do this, should we do that? You know, we trust our officers, some of them with a gun, we trust them with a baton, we trust them with CS. You know, why can't we trust them to tweet and to, to use live video to inform the public? Mm. Can I ask you about your um, other use of social media? Do you ever use something like Storify to sort of after an operation or after an event to knit yeah. all your social media engagement together and, and, and sort of tell that narrative to basically say, and we went on Bamboozle to do this, yeah. and we used Twitter for this, and we made a YouTube video for this? Because Leicestershire did that recently. Yeah. Sorry, I should say I worked on the Reading the Riots on Twitter projects yes. extensively, and so I'm sort of yeah. going around and talking to various police forces. And um, th during the EDL march in February at Leicester, in Leicester, they used Storify really effectively afterwards to, to sort of, um, even if the community wasn't necessarily aware of what hap was happening on the day yeah. or in the run-up, they had a record afterwards to say this is what we did, which can I think be equally valuable. So I, I, I'm just wondering the tension between live and also then having that record yeah. for people to later on mm -hmm. see, wow, that's amazing, you did that on bonfire night, right? Yeah. Maybe a month later, but to see yeah. that there is that engagement. I, I, I suppose the bottom line is I'm, I'm a cop. <laughs> yeah, no, you I know. understand, but, sure. But, but, but Storyfy yeah. is, is great, so you can have a little bit of, yeah. a little bit of text, you can have a yeah. skill, you can have a bit of YouTube. Yeah. yeah, so actually when I've kind of like done my bit, I've engaged with the public, for me that's kind of it. Okay. And, and it's, except in that it's archived, but something like EDL, you know, yeah. um, if Leicester have EDL come again in 12 months' time, actually, well. you know, you've actually got, here is the story, of what we did, yeah. this is how we engaged, yeah. um, and, and that's, that's a really good point. But it's something that I haven't. I was just yet. interested yeah. when I saw it because that's I just right. from, from comms manager point of view, in yeah. terms of that, mm. it's be what's the benefit because you'll do an internal evaluation of any activity like that. Most of that will be published anyway uh, on the publication schedule. What's your audience for that? We know our audience of people who replay our coverage live events. We know how many people do, and it's, it's a small but important proportion. I'd, I'd have to know that if we go to all that, it's the effort that you're going to get a value out of it because we haven't got the resources to do things that don't add value. Yeah. And we that's the difficulty. Yeah. No, I don't think it's taking that useful to persuade. Yeah. 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 And you will always be able to just point at that link then and say that's where it is, yeah, go and have a look at it. We, we, ha we do that as part of an operational evaluation anyway, whenever we have a job, which brings together the operational aspects, the traditional media, print media, all bring them to one evaluation document. So after the summer disorder, after some of the events we've done, 
we do a full document on, on those so we can measure and learn from that as an organisation. It does get published on the website as well. But again, I, I, I wonder how many people go to those sites and have a look at them back. And if there's, there's, there's a measure that tells you that, then it's a good value. You've got to know there's a measure there to take any way you do. I think to come back to your question, it all depends upon the actual the leadership within the force in terms of it, doesn't it, in Cumbria. Um, you know, it, it, it's there, it's that leadership, it's there, go out there and, and, and do it really. And, and for me, it, it, it's just one objective, it's about just engagement and actually showing that people like what we do. And I think it's important that we just get that message across to the public that we do it day in, day out. And I, and I, I think it's vastly undersold, what, what, certainly from the police service, what goes on. Um, those of us that are in the police in, in this room know what goes on day in, day out, second in, second out across the whole of the departments and it's just an, an, an opportunity to, just to show the public what collectively we do. So that's the one thing message you can really get out through the media. It's been no crime in this area <laughs> for last week. Yeah. You know yeah. that I reported in the future that's <laughs> to do. Yeah. How do you find the most um, popular what you've done to get engagement like, down Twitter and things with what you found that the public can really um, I'm probably going to point to um, a local, um, uh, sorry, an officer called Rich Stanley, he was at Warsaw Police Station. Now Rich is a response officer, so he's working 24-7, um, and, and he blogs about his work. Um, so I think one day um, he was on a guarding the crime scene, which is quite monotonous really, isn't it? You know, standing on the crime scene, but actually what he did was that at the end of his tour of duty, he actually then wrote a piece about the importance of why you need to preserve a, you know, a crime scene, and he, he put a photograph of the Queen looking at a, you know, a forensic scene that was that was made up. You know, Rich does some really great work. He blogs, you know, uh, not just about his police work, but also about his personal side. You know, things that he does at, at night time. You know, hashtag Foxwatch. You know, when it when it's really quiet in the early hours. So there's the there's the is the kind of the corporate side of Rich that we're not saying to him go and do that Rich, he's actually doing it himself. So he's doing the corporate side, he's also doing the, the, the friendly friendly side. Um, I did some work with some, some young people, um, 16 to 24 year olds, uh, a few weeks ago, and we showed them the tweets from Rich Stanley and said, right, if Rich walked through the door now, what would you what would you think would you know about him? And having read his tweets, they really liked what he was doing. So they felt that if he walked through the door they would know something about him. So that kind of balance of corporate and personal, uh, people like that. I think it's great that you're giving him the freedom and the kind of opportunity to do that. Well, he, he, exactly, exactly. And, and, and it's, it's fair play to Rich because he, he, he does that and he makes it interesting as well. We could do with more of that, Rich. But just to support your, um, support your point about people not really knowing what the police do, um, I read some Mori poll stats once, and um, they surveyed the general public, and they said when it came to the NHS, the teaching profession, social work, everybody's pretty much got a good understanding of what people working in those professions do. Yeah. When it comes to criminal justice, the figures like dropped to something like seven percent yeah. of respondents say yes, I actually know what goes on within the criminal justice system. Yeah. So any opportunity to get out and tell people what to do yeah. is great. Um, you asked um, sort of how we could uh, persuade more officers to do. <coughs> Um, I kind of thinking that um, you actually have to sell the benefit to them personally, as opposed to selling them a kind of a corporate benefit. Yeah. I think you've got to tell them how it's going to save them time in other ways, or how it's going to make their job easier yeah. in other ways. Whenever we try and sell stuff corporately to our officers, that, you know, the what's in it for me factor always kicks in, and unless there's something there, yeah. um, it ain't going to happen basically. Yeah, indeed. And I think I think it's that confidence cycle, isn't it, really? So Mrs. Miggins says there's a problem here. We listen to Mrs. Miggins and the neighbours, we tackle it, we report on it, and then it actually, do you know what, that word of mouth gets around to say, well, if you highlight it to the police, this is what they've done, and then it kind of, it just it spirals, doesn't it, that mm. kind of confidence. I think, um, I, mean, I do a lot of social media training and social media advice, and one thing I always say is, and I think this is an extreme example, um, it's, it's easy to show people how to use the tools, but it's not anywhere near as easy to show them what to say, how to say it, yeah. and to encourage them to have the sort of personality that wants to share things all the time. Yeah. And as you said, it's difficult. You know, people think, well, what do you have to say? You know, always yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you can get over that by getting them to use it and showing them it's not quite so difficult. But for a lot of people, it's a really 
it's a matter of worry. Putting your personality out there is a really difficult for lots of people. Yeah. Sorry, question? Oh, right. No, no, no. I was just agreeing. Maybe yeah, and, and I think, it, 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 you know, as I say, the officers just go out there day in, day out, don't they? They pop into the local shop, they have a conversation with the purpose, they find out what's going on. So, no, right, right. Thank, thank you for taking that on board. Do a lot of your colleagues um, use it in the same way? Or are you just um, I like think um, there's a colleague in Leicester. Um, Leicester City Centre, I've seen them use Bamboozer. I think I've seen a senior officer in the Met at their control room use it following a major incident, a major demonstration. Um, but I haven't seen any other... We've got Solihull, we've got colleagues in terms of... Yes, yes, um, Solihull, um, which is um, between Birmingham and Coventry, they're looking to use it around their neighbourhood priorities. Um, and that's really good because that's coming from the top, their chief superintendent. Mm -hmm. Sally Bourne has said, look, go out there, use it, it's there, see the benefits, see the value of it. But no, they're just trying to, trying to spread the word and get, get people on board. For, for us, for the Prime Minister Service, um, you know, I, my personal feeling is always very much playing catch up with other social media users. Um, and so we're very much in, the, in our infancy in the way that we want to use it, learning to use it. I know from Manchester, Manchester uh, Prime Minister, I think, um, there are more and more Prime Minister Services using it more expansively particularly some of the senior officers, um, but uh, you know, we're all still very much learning in that way. And, and some of this, you know, the bit of technology that we've been uh, exploring, so to speak, again, we're a little bit behind for, from Kerry, and if you like, you know, Kerry and I have been supporting each other, but, um, you know, really kind of linked in with, with some of what the police have been doing to try and learn from that. When you did your videos, you mentioned that people could tweet it as well, ask questions. Yes. Yeah. Did you get much interaction with that, or did you find it was people more watching the content, or were they actively engaging by asking? No, we had quite a few. Um, we tried to, uh, as Kerry said, it's quite very difficult to, you know, if you're doing an hour's broadcast, and it's pre-planned an hour's broadcast, to try and fill that with enough material, so you have to have things in there in case you don't have the questions coming forward. Um, and so we did things like demonstrate taser, yeah. uh, we had a fire engine there, you know, demonstrate piece of equipment, etc, etc. That generates questions about you know, the community services that were provided. We might talk about a particular project that's going on within that area. For instance, Kerry mentioned about a local council, where we'd link the local council to work to that, that meant something to the to local community. And, uh, and that would generate the questions from there. They would fire the questions in through Twitter or through Bambi, as you can see it coming through. And you know, you, we would we would basically answer the question there and there. I guess it, it's it's trying to think about interesting mm -hmm. content to fill if you don't get any questions. So I'd I read that I took a lot of letters of um, thanks from members of the public. So I did obviously didn't say it was from Mrs. Smith, number two Smith Street. I say I've had this letter of thanks, and you actually read out exactly what they've said. You know, it's just to, de to demonstrate it. Um, so yeah. So if we stop asking questions now, you're going to kind of start seeing your. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll pull this out. No, we're, we're used to ad we are a, we are a double act. Yeah. You wait till the end. The, 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 the best is yet yeah. 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 to come. Yeah. 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 We're getting the taser out. Yeah. 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 Have any of the products been used yet in evidence presented to court? Um, I didn't, no, know, I, I didn't I, know if you were challenged about forensic inter integrity as a product or anything. Has that been something no, that I mean, this, this is purely a, a personal view. I mean, if you look at the traditional method of gathering evidence nowadays, you know, I, if Simon had just witnessed a, an attack on somebody, I'd be sitting down there with a pen and paper. Mm. You know, how, how many years has that been good for us? Mm. But actually, in this day and age, Simon, can you tell me on video, what have you just seen? And you've got that first-hand you know, recollection, probably being interviewed by me about, you know, the rules of evidence, you know, uh, RV Turnbull, how long did you see them, lighting conditions, you know, have you met them before, all those kind of things, playing that then to the court, thinking about chopping down the amount of time in offices in the station, purely personal point of view, mm -hmm. I just think there are just, the world, there's opportunities, there really are opportunities. Yeah. The life, the life's Instant stuff really have just been um, very much from a distance, if you like. Uh, uh, and we've, like I say, most of our work has been focused around that pre planned community engagement rather than emergency response. Um, and you know, we've been used video less of emergency response and more as text tweeting about the answer instant, um, you know, from that perspective. So we haven't been challenged yet um, from the fire rescue service perspective. I don't think West Midlands have either, uh, the West Midlands police have either. Um, with regards to videoing from an incident, but actually 
quite rare that your video call actually itself is it's more pre planned community engagement yeah. perspective. So have you ever done that? Um, we've 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 um, filmed from a, a fire incident, not from a police incident, no. but a fire incident. Um, and certainly I have um, sent pictures um, through Twitter and text whilst I've been at an incident. Uh, you know, but like I say, our main priority really is command and control of that incident. So uh, you know, social media, Twitter takes a backward step until such times it might be convenient to do so if it's not detrimental to the incident itself. Um, you know, so that's kind of how we how we approach it. I kind of thought about it. it's a real fine line really. I, I could probably film live at the front door of being forced on a drug raid and hearing the police going in saying police, you know, search warrant. But actually, once you've got to that point, it, it is, it is, yeah, the same rules apply to you, you know. And, a, and actually, what, what, what is this all about really? Actually, I'd like to demonstrate to the public what we do and how they see that. With reality programs, really don't they? They're, you know, we did a video on our YouTube channel a week ago on the drugs raid and stuff. But yeah, we went as far as the door and stopped because that's how far we take the media. Yeah. There's no you have to go over property. You've got no rights to broadcast that footage. Yeah. Again, and it, it does work really well. We have the looking at 5,664 5, views on that in a month. Yeah. I was on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, it, for me, the, the, it comes back to that like lo local element. You know, mm. you live in Charles Moore in Coventry. This is an identified problem. Here's Charles Moore Street. It, that's what it, for me is about. Um, the the example about the YouTube video. Do you ever do any analysis of what people are saying about this video? So um, the metrics of views is a really well, completely unreliable because you don't know how many if people actually watch the whole thing. So you can click. And that counts as a view, yeah. and you watch 10 seconds. We tend to post it onto our Facebook and have the conversations with people. Oh, okay. And do you then you do, do you do some analysis of the comments to see how they've been received? Not, not with metrics, but we've seen no, 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 but actually field. reading all the comments all the media, and picking up on yeah. Comments. Okay, that's what I would guess. Yeah, comment. okay. Yeah. What is interesting, interesting. I'm, I'm not technically minded, but yeah. what I have been showed is the. I think you can look at how the video was viewed mm -hmm. and I think the majority mm. it is uh, mobile devices. Yeah. A lot of people are whether it's streaming yeah. on 3G or Wi Fi hotspots, that's where the majority yeah. of videos are actually yeah. you can tell that it's frightening the amount of data that's hidden behind it but sometimes the volume of data goes into the problem is to work out what's relevant and what's not. Yeah. So that's why comments are so useful because yeah. that tells you much more how it's been received. I think we're probably uh, the last few minutes, I mean, what, what I've, I've taken, I, I've, I've personally found it really useful. I hope you found it informative. I really like the point that the gentleman who's, who's filming us has made about actually the benefits to the people who are actually, I'm, I'm wanting to actually deliver it to. And I think there's probably some work for me to do there. Um, and I accept that it's not for everybody. Um, but um, time is it? Can I just pick up the Did you say you interviewed victims of crime? Yes, I did, yeah. And you kind of blurred them out? No, no, he was, he, was to, um, uh, he was happy to talk. Um, it was just one of those house broken into. Um, and actually, what we were keen to find out was what was the level of service that he'd, that he'd received. So he picked up the phone, what was the kind of, how did the operator speak to him? Um, how did the you know the first attending officer deal with the matter? How did the subsequent investigation go? And it was just to get a bit of a, a flavour and a feel. And um, I, I do I tend to tweet a lot of positive comments that we get around our feedback, but I also tweet negative feedback. And what I also I find is that when we get that feedback, some it prompts other people to say, do you know what? I had crap service of the day. And actually, it gives me a line in to say, do you know what, I can try and cover that service because you kind of asked ask that question for me. So, yeah, coming back to your original question, yeah, a uh, member of the public, quite happy to be filmed. Um, if anything, he really chuffed because he wanted to show his grandparents, his grandchildren that um, he could be interviewed. Did you have press conferences? Uh, I don't think we have, no. But it, 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 kind really of, it comes back to that, actually. You know, the traditional form is a press conference here. Well, actually, do we need to gather the press?
around, you know, uh, I accept some, some we do, some we do, but there's well, actually... Well, even better, you can do both, presumably. Yes, that's, um, yeah. that's exactly what <laughs> we do. Because yeah. that's from, I'm just thinking from a citizen's point of view, that would be awesome if I could, like, mm-hmm. watch a load of press, watch 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 see all see these uh, press, press conferences that have happened, okay, because I'd right. be really so interested to see them. Yeah, I'll take that back to corporate comms. I've got a question for you. Yeah, go for it. Have you got any plans to, um, once you've got up enough material, to, to go through it and maybe edit it into maybe a short film and then use that as a way of publicising the fact that you're doing it, maybe in a local cinema or some sort of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a, a, a year. Small screen, Kev, you can be on a small screen. Yeah, Studio three. Studio three. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what well, I like the idea there is actually that probably some of the snippets for it internally. Yeah. That might be useful, yeah. so look, this is how we've used it. Now over to you guys, here's the benefits of you as operational officers, what, what do you think? Mm-hmm. So no, I, I, I like that. I think it goes back to what you said, benefits, and if you can show snippets of how it's yeah. all in one, then it makes yeah. it encourages another yeah. So what you're saying is you had another assignment on there. You, you could have a bit. You could take one step further and have outtakes, but then maybe... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think... You know, the point you made about getting your point of view across as opposed to the edited view of the media is very important. I mean, yeah. you mentioned Syria at the start. Yeah. I mean, people are using, particularly Bambooza, in Syria. Yeah. And they're getting, I mean, there's, um, there's one particular guy who's actually, who actually got killed while he was live streaming from Syria. Um, there's lots of, I mean, if you search Bambooza for Syria, you will find lots of footage yeah. of fighting, people being killed, funerals, people being attacked at funerals. Um, and it's the government can't stop it. I mean, they tried to stop it and they tried to block it, but yeah. people keep finding ways around it. Right, that, that's thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you.